Hello everybody, welcome to Nintendo Power Block here on Boss Push Network. I'm your host and Lights Insider ADV. Joining me, the one, the only boss man himself, Mr. Corey Derrick. Hello, good sir. Hello, Ed. Uh if you're hearing this, I will be um let's see, what days come out Wednesday? I will be uh doing some Star Wars things and some Toy Story things at Disney World because we will be at Hollywood Studios. Hello. And I will I will probably be in something Indiana eating gyros uh, with Larry and uh, being on. Look, everybody, the founders are on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Corey, we, should, we need to. We get are away on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> we are away from content creating. Uh, we are just taking this time to kind of, you know, relax recharge and, the uh, old batteries as they say yes yes so um you guys are seeing this on wednesday uh and you'll also see our expansion pass but yeah me and Corey just decided to take a vacation uh, i know Corey, you had yours plan i have mine's plan and everything uh it just happened to be that we took a vacation on the same week and everything we so. we did Ed's not coming with me to Disney World. He decided to go see his real friends. So, you know, I wasn't invited. You know, <laughs> I would have paid. I would. I literally would have saved up <laughs> and was just like, okay, I'm taking the train two days ahead to to get to where you at, Corey. Spend those two days with you, and then get on the plane and fly to uh, Orlando. Yeah, next time, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah, so what Ed said, we we're kind of like just taking a week off, but we didn't really want anybody to like, we didn't want to miss an episode, you know? So we just, uh, here we are, I guess. Um, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of just doing like a state of the show type thing. That's why Cordy's not with us. I mean, we're not going to tell her to come out in here on a Friday night, right? I mean, that's... You know who does that? <laughs> who does? Um, so that's yeah. So we're gonna just kind of talk about the show and kind of where we're at, where we want to be, ideas, that kind of thing. I think I think we're all kind of on the same page in terms of ideas. You know, mm -hmm. I just uh, I don't know. I. I'm in this space where like I want to try something new and different, but I don't know exactly what that is, you know. And and I just I don't know. It burn out burn out isn't the right word, although like I'm kind mm -hmm. of feeling that with some other things. But I I feel like, and I I hope nobody takes this the wrong way because I don't mean it this way. But like I feel like Pow Block is still stuck in the era when i went to go do try to get arsenal x off the ground you know mm -hmm. and like i i i want to i want to bring like our our old flavor back and i don't know how to do that without still giving people the show that they like you know mm -hmm. so i don't i don't know that's just that's where i'm at ed where where are you at um I, I can't say so if people been checking us out on Twitter, uh Corey, you've been trying out like Pack Watch and uh kind of putting out it they they look like ads in a sense, uh, with some of your Twitter posts and I kinda like that engagement mm -hmm. that you have, you know, say this is a, a story that we'll probably cover on the show or just so that you guys know. And I, I kind of feel like I like that new direction that you're going with yeah. in a sense. It's like kind of preparing the our viewers and uh, those who follow us on Twitter or even Discord um, what is hot going on in Nintendo and what where there's a chance that we'll be talking about. Um, I, I, like you said, uh, Pack Wild um, is talking about the new releases and i like the fact that there it's just three games you know i i think i know there are games that it should be a big list but i'm like keeping it simple to three games well, that I, is major was, I, oh, go ahead. oh i was just gonna say it's not i mean it could be anywhere between like 
I want to do like between three and six games a week. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, there's never really going to probably be that many, but you know, there's so many games coming to the Switch every week that I'm just like, there's no way you could possibly list them all. So I'm kind of highlighting obviously the most popular ones and then ones yes. that I think would be interesting to at least our audience, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Now there's, I mean, there's not going to be one this week because I'm on vacation and I just, I'm running out of time because I, you know, I still have to post what nine podcasts to, after <laughs> we record tonight. Uh, yes. The two boss rush podcasts we recorded this week, the two after darks, uh, the, uh, interview that Celeste sent me the talk, the walk, uh, that Celeste sent me a couple weeks ago and I need to get that done. Like, I'm just trying to get everything done. And then, obviously, two power blocks and two <laughs> expansion packs. So, passes. So, yeah, I I don't know if I'm going to get to social media because that honestly takes a little bit of time. Uh, but what I am going to try to do once we come back, and I think, I think um, in 2023, which kind of feels weird to talk about, but also it's, like, already, <laughs> already here in – in like what seven weeks eight weeks so um you know we i know we want to try some things i know we want to do certain things i know we want to get back to like playing some games for everybody and with mm-hmm. the community you know we've been kind of playing around with the idea of moving nintendo related content to its own youtube channel also we've been playing around with that and not that like we would be leaving the boss rush network by any stretch right but like mm-hmm. it 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 would just be easier to like I, for n- people looking for nintendo related content you know and and it's not be able un- to curate it in one space yeah and it's not uncommon for people to do that right like we do that for work mm-hmm. where i work like have separate uh <laughs> websites and and uh youtube channels for specific things that we're aiming for and you know, IGN did that for a long time and uh, Game Informer just started their new channel that's just po- they have just podcasts and then just Let's Plays um, mm-hmm. on specific channels. So it's not uncommon. I think I think I would really like to just try to do that at some point, um, whether it's the podcast moving over with Nintendo related content or just gameplay related content on one channel and podcast on another that remains to be seen you know but mm-hmm. you know we're we're gonna try because we still want, we want to do the retro game show again we want to do um you know playing <laughs> playing bad games uh, together we want to play co-op games together um so that's that's something we're really looking at i i feel like you know we kind of let some shows go this year and I think it's been for the better. Um, and I, what I want to do, honestly, is like, I would like to revamp the Patreon. I would like to revamp some of the content we do. And I would like to do more with less, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So that's that's where my head's at. Ed, I don't know if you have anything else to say on that. I, I hope you do. I want to hear your ideas, you know. Well, I definitely, um, you know, I, I kind of, you know, the trivia stuff that we was doing on, on Pop Block for a while, like, I think it was kind of fun and everything and, you know, us doing the list and stuff. So I, I kind of feel like that, you know, sometimes being able to do maybe bring those in maybe once a quarter or twice a quarter would kind of be nice. Uh, I've been thinking about um, doc mode and I I'm thinking of moving uh not getting rid of doc mode or anything but I'm thinking of just doing it that in our thing because I feel like our expansion passes and I know we've been talking about this Corey that our expansion passes lead to more conversation because it's just a, that's like a topic a main topic which is separate from power block but it still has that power block feel to it. That still has that connection. Mm-hmm. So I think, I, I I think definitely with we'll probably still do two doc modes per month, 
where one of them is going to be a <laughs> Patreon uh, topic. Like, we yeah, really need I, to get... I, like, oh, go ahead. I know, just to play off of that real quick, I know all, all of our content is free right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I we're we're testing out the idea of of doing Patreon exclusive things. I it, it's not going to be anything that exists right now, obviously. Yes, but there are you know I I would like to draw more people there. Like twenty twenty two was a test bed for launching Patreon and really like seeing if it works for us or if it doesn't. And mm-hmm. I think for the most part. It worked. I know towards the end we kind of stumbled with scheduling and and standard def kind of lost some traction, right, and uh, that kind of thing. But I think overall we did pretty well managing what we did offer people. And even when standard def kind of stumbled, we picked it back up with stuff like Talk the Walk and interviews and you know a few mm-hmm. extra expansion passes here and there right like we're trying to really um still provide the same amount of content just in a different way and i think that really worked for us um i would like to add like community interaction tiers like you know like voting and <clears throat> all this other stuff to um <clears throat> to the patreon and I don't know. I've just kind of been looking at different Patreons to see how they do it. And um, I think there's some really decent choices for us. I think we just need to kind of look at our content, what we offer, how do we do more with less and what if is, is it worth exploring some sort of exclusive content? Because I think, I think we do need to offer some exclusive content. It just, it's just based on, what shows do we offer that exclusive content through? Um, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I mean, interviews and talk the walk are not going to be exclusive. Nothing from that. Right? No. Like, uh, Celeste does enough as it is, right? And you with that show, and uh, you know, I, th- I, I mean, honestly, I think we kind of funnel it through Pow Block at some point. Um, the Pow Block set of shows, right? Um, Yes. I don't know. I even thought about playing around with like, what if our spoiler casts were the audio versions were Patreon exclusive and, but you could watch the video on YouTube a month later or something like that, you know? Yeah. You know, there's, there's things like that, that we've, that we've kind of played around with. And, and overall, I mean, I think our Patreon has been pretty successful, uh, so far. It's just, uh, you know, it's it's getting harder to do do the amount of stuff that we do, and I mean, multiple people have said that what we do, what we offer, for the price is really cheap. You know, and mm-hmm. I kind of want it to stay that way because I feel like, I mean, a dollar for early access to five shows is, I think that's pretty. It's pretty good. Yeah. It it and I think you gotta you gotta factor in is that the listener or the viewer is also consuming content from different places mm-hmm. of Patreon. Yeah. Um, I mean, like different shows and, and everything. And for what we offer and what we give, we just have a different perspective of, of things. And, you know, we we try to uh, still bring that fun that we started this with. You know, uh, it's not always going to be serious or serious at times and stuff. But it's always good to hear different things. So maybe, um, you know, if we do a spoiler cast or something, uh, it may be on the game that me and you, we are playing, but actually have a disagreement. Because, like, me and you, we we agree on some things and disagree on some stuff, uh, but we've never had a show where we just completely came different opposite of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um where it's just like this is what I'm <laughs> for and this is what this is for. We talk this is kind of what uh Yahtzee did from uh um the escapist. Yeah. They got yeah. like uh That's slightly... funny. I just listened to a podcast with the editor in chief of the escapists on it the other day. Uh, that, yeah. that website's really interesting, by the way. It is. 
I, I normally watch it on uh so Wednesdays I go there to watch the latest zero punctuation. Like how y'all see does the reviews is in our thing. But then I check their YouTube stuff and um that that's where they kinda have a lot of their podcasts and stuff at. But they also do Patreon where people can get all of that stuff early, way in advance. Mm-hmm. Everything. But I kinda like what Yasi and Marty Sleva, uh, Sleva is doing, um, where there's a question and they both come from different sides supporting each question. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, and yeah, it, it sounds like I am still in the idea, but I, I think who cares? Should... You know what? You know what Pablo <laughs> Picasso said, and and also countless other artists. <laughs> the the best art is. Like the most famous art is art that was copied from someone else. They just knew how to promote it. So, yeah, and and I think that would. I I'm not saying it's a sh- it would be a show where we argue and get mad at each other and stuff. I think I, we I, should I, do like I. So sorry, I didn't mean I didn't mean to uh, uh, interrupt you. No, but there's uh, I don't know if you. Uh, know who skip bayless and shannon sharp are but their debate show on fox sports is pretty hilarious and i feel like we fit that role pretty easily (laughs) um Uh, not no everybody it's not a race thing not because skip is white and shannon sharp is black no we just uh, ed and i debate and just disagree with each other a lot and i think it would be funny yeah or and or maybe have a third person like they're a judge or something oh, no. <laughs> to hear our case and everything. But I think, I, 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 because we come from two different worlds when it comes to games and everything, and I think having a show where we actually get a chance to, I guess, explore each other's games or our the way that we look at games um, and stuff, and just have that disagreement where we are not butting heads and mm-hmm. we're not one of us is, I'm, I, I apologize for the events I tried to fight mm-hmm. to get me right and I'm an Aries I, I, here we go I, with I his uh, <laughs> special signs again I, I see no people I'm an tell astronaut me that I, <laughs> no people tell me that I will argue uh, a point to a fault until I am right, and I... I mean, I've told you that before, and then I just end the conversation because I know I'm not going to win. Cause... <laughs> uh, so, I, I guess I have, I personally have to learn to be like, this is my message. Let me stay to my message. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If you agree, then agree. If we go to a conclusion where... Because I, I, I will say that I do get to that point where I, I'm trying to I guess sometimes get my point across on things and I don't do a good job at that because I would go 17 different directions instead of heading to the one direction <laughs> and everything. Um, but I, I, and I know that's kind of our flow together of yeah. us recording and everything is that, yeah, we are going to disagree. We are going to be like, ah, but at the end of the day, it's like, of course, I'm going to text you, hi, Corey. Or hi, boss. You know. Yeah, I mean, how many to- how many times do we argue on a podcast, and then like literally when the record button ends, we're just like, well, bro, okay, let's talk about something else." I guess, <laughs> you know. I right. Mean, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I. I don't think. I don't think. If people think that we get mad at each other on the show, then they just haven't been listening long enough. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's my that's my hot take on this show. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it's just like they just they just haven't been listening long enough, which is fine. Welcome new use new listeners, I guess. But, you know, we argue all the time. Like when you say that GTA is lazy and I'm like, um, I don't think so. I just think you don't like that game. But, you know, that's that's like an example of something that we argue about mm-hmm. more than I would like to. <laughs> more than I would like to. Uh, I think I have drown the horse on that topic i think people know how Dude, I you've feel drowned the horse it. brought it back up bash its face into a window and then drown it again <laughs> and then add it uh season of salt <laughs> yeah and then you're like uh mm, glue then you glued it back together with its own part i don't know and then drowned it again well and i i think it's 
I think I have got made my point to it where I don't need to not say argue or debate it, but have that discussion and everything. And I I, I think sometimes I get in my mind because I'm just like, I wish sometimes I, I do say this to myself. I'm like, I wish sometimes people could see things from my viewpoint. And I think it's because my viewpoint is so passionate about gangs that I want to see better. But I also, I also think that's what makes our show good though. Right. Is like, Mm -hmm. you know, or like what the potential to be good, because I think, (coughs) excuse me. I think, I think we've just been both working so hard and doing so much that like, you know, I mean, I think the quality's dipped a little bit just because we're like tired, not because we don't love what we do still. I just think we're both exhausted. And I think, you know, this comes back to like mm-hmm. a week off and where we can be like, okay, let's, let's reset, let's regroup, let's figure out how to make this better. And I mean, some of it too is like, I'm only available at certain times of the day, you know, usually like after eight thirty or the, the rare time my wife takes the kids somewhere, you know, like that doesn't help either in terms of us being tired or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I want, I want to make, I want to make the show the best show that it can possibly be. Right. And yeah, I, I want it to appeal to a wider audience, which is why we brought Cordy on. Right. Like, I don't, again, I don't want this to sound mean, but she, I, like she's, she's not as into Nintendo as we are like the deep nitty gritty, but she has different perspectives on games that appeal yes. to different people. Right. Like, Hello Neighbor, the streaming side of things with like you know Dead by Daylight and all the and all those streaming <laughs> streaming <laughs> games, not you know not to sound, <laughs> I I, ho- I hope that doesn't sound negative. I'm just saying like she offers a different perspective, which is why I think another reason why we need to change the way we kind of approach the show too, mm-hmm. because the last couple of weeks you know when we're when we're doing news like since she's not as into the things, she doesn't have as much to say or, you know, really anything at all to say about certain things, which on some things it's fine, but I think we need to find a way to incorporate how she games and her personality into the show without disrupting our flow. And I think, I, I mean, again, she's only been on what, two episodes and a couple expansion packs. Like, there's yeah. a that it's gonna take a little bit of time, but I think there's a way we can do that too, you know. And yeah, because I think the sh- oh, I think the streaming side it or an opinions in the streaming world is is valid to what we do, where I and power block and expansion pass. I do too. To and like we're we're basically just like <laughs> we're basically just old people you know, who play games now. And she brings like a little bit of, you know, young fire to bring Mm -hmm. into this, into this grumpy old show, you know I mean? And and I think that's great. And I would like to get more people on the show. Like we talk hundreds of, (laughs) we talk all the time about how we would love to have Grayson on the show all the time. I know he's busy. Uh, Or, you know, get Stephanie in here once in a while or even shake things up and get, Laron or even guests outside of outside of Boss Rush, I would love to because ha- so with with Boss Rush podcast, I've been trying to get people on there that are outside of Boss Rush, right? Like we had Secret Friends on, we had uh, mm-hmm. Rush Jet from Rogue State uh, Rogue Station Nine. We had you know we just did a women's panel this week, right? A bunch of p- uh, different people on, so my goal is to get more people in, you know, and I think there's got to be a way to do that too. Um, so, you know, I, I have a lot of different ideas. I just trying to execute the best way that we know how. And I think a week of like relaxing and kind of like, I'm not even taking my laptop on vacation. When's the last time you saw me without a computer in my hand? Right. I mean, I'm literally working on posting episodes now while we talk, you know, I'm I'm trying to like be without it, 
but at the same time i'm gonna be like i'm gonna have my notepad open on my phone to like you know take some notes and figure out what works and what doesn't and i downloaded a couple episodes to see like how we can make it feel better you know because there there's things that i would like to do like when i write those the last couple weeks i made a doc with like a big long paragraph about the Mm -hmm. story and trying to put a different spin on it and as much as i would love to do that i don't know if it works for how we podcast you know but then i listen to something like the old giant bomb shows or next lander or the jeff gersman show and i i I look at those shows and they just like they'll just willy-nilly it's like they just wrote out like oh bayonetta three's out you know and then they talk about bayonetta three for like 10 minutes and then they'll be like sony's vr headset is 549 dollars. that's a choice and then they talk about why that's a choice you know and i i I can honestly honestly say that i kind of like how you are adding your experience of family news like even if even if it's just a paragraph with a a couple of questions because i think so it's the context of stuff versus expectation of a new story headline you know, not everybody knows what is going on in the world of Nintendo or world of video games. Mm-hmm. It's just getting a headline without getting the context. It kind of does a disservice to the listener. You know, the viewers yeah. might be following social media and stuff, but let's say if the listeners don't follow social media or who work overnight or who are not even in the US, the USA and don't get news like that, I... And, and listen to us from from different countries. I kind of like just how you break it down and then have those questions to let us have that discussion. And and that's why part of Docmo is kind of, you know, taking falling back is because the news stories are they lead up to some great discussions, Corey. They they really do. And I feel like we've been having great discussions. We, of course, we want to get more Courtney in and get her viewpoint of this because I think we all could come from three sides of of one conversation or one news story and just like be able to talk about it and give our viewpoints so that <laughs> sorry about that so that the viewers and listeners can hear kind of how we all think when it comes to things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, new stories like that and stuff. So I, I say keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I Everything. just... I, I, I really I, like it. So, I, I mean, I, I know we can have the general conversation after I, I talk about it. I just... I feel like there needs mm-hmm. to be a better, like, lead into the conversation. Um, mm-hmm. My I think I think the best podcast on the internet right now, and I know people are, are going to roll their eyes, but I think the best podcast on the internet right now is sacred symbols and i kind of am trying to model family news family news after how they do news on that show right and because they have like here's a little bit of information about the story here's a little bit of information about the history of the game or the studio here's a little bit of history about the series that this game's from right like i i really like how they do that because it's like i i learned so much more about specific games that i don't know a lot about because they add Mm -hmm. a little bit of that kind of flavor to it and then you can add that flavor to the context of the conversation you're about to have. So and, and I kind of, and I kind of be when I read news on Nintendo Life, they kind of do that too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, and, they they cite know... they cite a lot of Push Square and and Video Games Chronicles, and they do that a lot too. So yeah, I mean, Push Square is literally the PlayStation version of Nintendo Life. So and what's the Xbox one? Pure uh, Xbox. Pure X- X- yeah. It's kind of fallen off a little bit, but um, yeah, I I really like those websites. I I Nintendo Life is like the first site I go to every time I look for family news at this point. Yeah, they... I do. Don't don't worry, I I do too now. Because game, let me tell you, Game Informer was the first one that I was looking to. It was Game Informer, and then Destruct Toy, and then Nintendo Life. Yeah, but well, now... I mean, with everybody gone at Game Informer, like. You know, I mean, no offense to the, I, I hope, I know that I don't want to offend the new people there, but like they're moving it more in a direction of like YouTube and, and stuff, which is fine. I think that's a great idea. I think that is a great 
idea to keep up with, mm -hmm. you know, because like, mag I mean, magazines have obviously been dead for a long time, right? Game Informer is kind of like the last major kind of, you know, corporate style magazine, right? I mean, obviously, yes. there's like the fan driven Nintendo ones and uh, read only magazine, which is, you know, a magazine that that uh, I know Celeste really loves, right? Like th those types of magazines exist, but like Game Informer is really the last major corporate video game magazine right but that that's like a legacy thing though their main thing has been their website for so long and like now they're shifting into video which is smart they're i don't know how long i mean the thing is is like i think you could have taken that game informer crew that was doing their video stuff and they could have left and done their own thing done exactly what they were doing a podcast a spoiler cast let's plays and streams and you know talking about new games and stuff and they could have done so much better because they wouldn't have been associated with gamestop and i know that's like a different conversation for a different day but like mm -hmm. the natural evolution of what what people are looking for is the video streaming style thing they want to listen to podcasts I, I, while they're at work they want to come home they want to play games or they want to watch streams while they're playing on their phone right like that's what they want to do. They don't want to read a, a like we talked about this on Power Block last week. Like nobody wants to read a review. That's why IGN makes little square boxes with the score mm -hmm. and an excerpt from the review, and that gets way more likes and clicks than their their five thousand re, uh, word review of God of War, right? Which I still need to sit down and read. It's just like nothing. And again, I know a lot of people from Boss Rush listen to this, and they're gonna like probably get mad at me for some reason but like websites are like the the website traditional media websites are dead and dying and like we and, and i'm trying to figure out how we can not beat it to the punch because we're already kind of there and past but like i want to be in that mix of like we're doing let's plays. We're doing streams. We're doing community nights. We're doing podcasts. Like that's what I want to do. You mm -hmm. know. Well, it's. I think a lot of people haven't got kind of the history and evolution of like podcasts and video content and everything. Because I I know for me my biggest start of not doing it but seeing it definitely is oneup.com. dot com. Oh, Ziff Davis. So, you know, they yeah, had one up. They had they had EGM, but you know, and EGM was the Bible for video games, for gamers and everything. But then you started hearing um, you know, the way that they was doing news stories and like they started out with that and that's how they started doing podcasts. Um, because it was on your iPod, mm -hmm. you know, and it was taking this radio style show or and design and being it and putting it all together for like 10, 15 minutes. And yeah. then it started, it started evolving, you know, that they had the one up show where you were watching different segments of a game that they're reviewing, that they're previewing. And like, just like me and you, Corey, like we were working together as associates at EGM, we were having discussions about this game and mm -hmm. everything and what we felt about it. And so on Fridays, like at zipped at oneup.com was the explosion of video podcasts uh, and podcasts. And you can go to YouTube and watch all of their shows and hear some of their podcasts and stuff. But it was Friday was the thing for podcasts for everybody. If you were going to get your video game podcast, you was probably listening to one up. And then so when things started changing with retro knots and all of this stuff, one up.com were what well, to me personally was the leading company for that until they mm -hmm. closed their doors. And so they, you know, yeah. and they had people who were working on EGM doing that video, video content and stuff. Yeah. So we were seeing, we weren't seeing streams and stuff like that. Yeah, until Twitch became more of a popular thing. Once streaming started happening with Twitch, mm -hmm. and people were tuning in. Ed lost his video and his audio. Now he's frozen. And there he is. There's the beep. 
Hello. Hi, Ed. Hi. Uh, no, I mean, just to, I, just to play off that, you know, I mean, my first exposure to all, like, the podcasts and stuff was, it was when that group from GameSpot started Giant Bomb, right? Mm-hmm. Ryan Davis and and uh, Jeff Gersman, and then later, you know, Brad and, you know, the, 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 the crew now that have all now left Giant Bomb, obviously, and started their own things again. But, like... It was that, and it was Game Scoop, and then later on it was, you know, Three Red Lights, which was the Xbox podcast at IGN that turned into Unlocked, and then Beyond, Podcast Beyond, you know? Yeah. And then, like, obviously, like, all that stuff kind of splinters off, and people leave and do their own thing, and then you kind of find them and do, you know. I mean, the, the reason why I even started doing content creation and podcasting stuff was because of the old podcast Beyond with, with Greg and Colin, right? Like yeah, that that was that, and then like Giant Bomb also two huge inspirations for like <laughs> ideally what I would like to do in terms of content creation, and just never got there because I'm, you know, I don't I don't have ten to twelve hours a day to put into it. I have three, you know, any if I and and that's lucky if my kids go to bed on time, you know, so. Right. uh and I don't have five, six days a week to do it. I'm trying to cut it down to three so I can do more things outside of this. Not that I, you know, yeah. you know, so, <clears throat> and, and so, yeah, I, I would like to like explore other things like that. I would like to explore streaming and it's hard because like we're not on this game schedule either, you know, so we're trying to coordinate that way too. But yeah, um, I think, Obviously, adding Cordy adds another body to do something in case I am not available or you're not available, right? Like, and obviously, we can pull other people in if we need to or want to, but finding that baseline schedule of, of Pow Block and Expansion Pass, and maybe, maybe that's something we talk about too. Like, do we record expansion do we shorten up power block and do expansion pass after power block so we can do more stuff during the week instead of recording another episode you know i don't know but i think i don't know i i feel like i I, i've gone back and i'm trying to like upload the older shows that did make the rss feed for some reason when we transferred from Mm -hmm. podbean to anchor and like, yes. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times we've had a show that is this discussion of like, do we hit the reset button again? How do we, how do we change it up? How do we like stay fresh? And I think that's like why part of the reason why we haven't grown is because I am, you know, I'm as kind of whatever I j- it's indecisiveness and changing things and people don't get used to like settling in to a a, a, a routine you know and mm-hmm. i i want to get to the point where we can just come in settle down know the routine go through it which i mean yeah right now we know that but like it doesn't it again it doesn't it feels not stale but like stagnant I, I I don't even think stagnant. I just I feel like it's not how we used to be. It's more the show after I left and then we came back and like continued after you know I came back and now it's it's just us again and I feel like we need to figure out how to get our old spin on it again. And I've been looking at the numbers of Pow Block and Expansion Pass people like expansion pass more than the normal show. It seems like, you know, like, because I think we're just us and we're talking about random stuff and talking about Mm -hmm. just talking and being ourselves and not trying to like force feed another news show down someone, you know, like I, I, not that I I want power block to be a new show, but I, I just, I want it to be light, lighter and, and, more fun and different interesting segments. I think, I think the thing with, with expansion pass <laughs> is that it has of course more freedom because we're only focused on one thing. We're pop block, we're focusing on multiple things and we're 
He froze again, everybody. He's frozen. Look at that, look at that face he's making, though. Hello? Hello. 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 So, yeah, I, I, I just, uh, I think we need to take some time, not, I mean, not like time off from the show, but I think we need to ha pick a, like have a day where we have like the team together and mm -hmm. kind of go through each segment, say, is it worth keeping? Is it worth keeping how it is? Or is it worth tossing and trying something new? Because and like, I, I, oh, go ahead. because like, I think, again, no offense. I think the most useless segment on Nintendo Power Block is Snack Nintendo. <laughs> I like I don't I I feel like I feel like that's something that I and mean, this is this is just an example. I don't know if we mm. have you know, we don't have to change anything about it or anything, but I feel like I feel like Snack Tendo should be part of like it should be like a question of like how was your weekend? Did you have anything to, what snacks did you have? You know, what did you get anything cool or did you snack on anything this weekend? You know, like like a natural kind of part of the beginning of the episode and not just you know, I and I know that that's, that's also I know that's like a what do you call it? Um I, I, I'm in the minority of that because I know people love that segment. It's just like I don't ever really ha sometimes sometimes i'm like well i had a pretzel i guess um <laughs> and i and i think that's why that one episode where i said that we was gonna skip snack to the i think this is before you came back Corey. that you know the response where people were upset or they don't like the change oh, i was I'm just i like, was on that episode i was on that episode oh. but i'm like I, we're skipping it because um, we had something bigger to talk on that episode, and I wanted mm -hmm. to give it more time for that. Mm -hmm. thing. And you know, Snack Tendo, uh, it's a great segment, you know, and everything. I'm not, I'm not trying to be here to defend or anything. Oh, um, I'm, I'm but not. It's... I'm not trying to say we should like get rid of it or anything. I'm just saying. I'm saying like, but we kind of like should merge it that's into an, that's what an... we've been doing for. It's just it, that's like just an intro. example, you know. It's just that's just an example, so uh, of something. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, sorry, I didn't mean to like totally derail the. Oh no, no, no! I I think it's like when we have when we'll have our meeting with that's something that we we were discussing everything because, um, I know lately not there hasn't been a lot of new snacks and everything that we all have gone out and tried and everything. Um, so it's not like it's it's something new every week. Sometimes it's just the same old thing um, from week to week and everything. So, I mean, we could, discuss, we could discuss it. And the people, you know, if I know they love the segment of Snack Tendo, uh, but I, I think sometimes I, I think that's something that we could also incorporate with Patreons. You know, where Snacktendo isn't about us; it's about or or the viewers and stuff. Like, pick five viewers. Be like around the world, or what did you? What meal? What snack did you guys have? Mm -hmm. Let's shout them out in, in or something. yeah, just something, just an idea in there. Yeah, and and I think like I really think. I mean, the the other day we were we were talking in our in our text chat, right? Like, I think one of the coolest channels, even though I don't really watch a lot of what they do, but I I, I like what they do is MinMax. Max. Yes. I think they do a lot of really cool, unique, interesting things. You know, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, you know, I I mean, I I wish I watched more of them. I. I think I think that's a group that I root for, but I wish I liked them more than I did, you know? Like but I still root for them because I think they're all great people and great Yes. Um I I just I don't know. There's just something that I just when I go to watch stuff on YouTube, I just don't think about them, you know? Mm hmm And when I say I wish I liked them more, it it does it, I'm not saying that I don't like them. I'm just saying like they're not one of the first people I think of when I want to watch something on YouTube, you know, <laughs> right. Which, 
kind of sucks because I, I think they do a lot of cool, unique things. And I would actually like the way I view our team is actually more akin to mid max than anybody else on the internet because mm -hmm. we have like a core group of people that do content, but then we pull people from other areas to like help us out or co-host or, you know what I mean? Yes. So, yeah. Well, Corey, <laughs> I think that's going to be it for Why, are you tired uh, this it? discussion. Well, I mean, we we have an expression pack to record. I know, but I, I'm having I'm having fun to talking. Like, I mean, like we, buddies. I mean, I mean, we do have some new. We we do supposed to have news. Uh, I don't know if you want to cover any news stories. Or anything. Well, let me let me read the let me re read our Patreon uh, okay. supporters real quick. Uh, if you want to support the show, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. That's another thing I want to talk about, too, by the way, after I'm done reading the Patreon names. Um, if you want to support us for a dollar, you get early access to five separate shows. If you want to be a Patreon producer, you can sign up for the $5 tier. Our Patreon producers for this episode of Nintendo Power Block are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian Skipper, my wife, Sana Dierig. Francisco Santillan and Rebecca Jewell. I want to thank all of our Patreon producers. I want to thank all of our patrons and I want to thank all of our free listeners. Remember all of our content is free. We just offer a few perks. If you support us over on Patreon, uh, if you listen on Apple podcasts or Spotify, please leave us a five star rating and review. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that good stuff. Um, yeah. And thanks for the support. Um, <clears throat> yeah, anyways, back, back to like the Patreon thing also. And it didn't mm -hmm. really hit me until somebody messaged me the other day and asked me where a specific show was, uh, because like, <clears throat> I know a lot of people kind of associate other shows like, yeah, they associate boss rush and one V one and power block with, with, uh, boss with, with boss rush. Right. But they, Somebody asked me why Lore Together wasn't on our podcast feed. Are you there, Ed? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Somebody asked me why Lore Together wasn't on our Patreon podcast feed. And I'm like, and I answered them. I said, well, that's not, they have their own Patreon. They are part of the Boss Rush Network, but they're a separate entity. Right. And this was a, right. this was a, maybe, I want to say about, two months ago and they're like oh well you said you said like the patreon says boss rush network are they if, if they're part of the network why aren't they on the on the patreon feed and i didn't really have like a like i had an explanation for them but like what they were asking made sense to me because they're part of the boss rush network but they're not part of the boss rush network if that makes sense you know what i mean <laughs> they're part they're they're partners <clears throat> they're in the partner part of no, boss rush uh, network. no they're not they're not even partners they're just like we like to take other shows and help support them yes and give them a space where they feel like they can promote their stuff and you know that was kind of like the big idea for the boss rush network was like anybody who was creative or had their own thing could come in and like there's a there's a space in our discord for you. Like you can promote your stuff. You can have conversations with people. You can meet other creative people to kind of collaborate, whatever. It was a umbrella idea, but I didn't obviously think about it all the way through <laughs> because like, you know, I, and it kind of dawned on me too, a couple months ago when I asked what people's favorite show from boss rush was. And people were saying like, you know, EXP cast or lore together or, you know, like that kind of stuff. And I was like, Oh, well I meant our shows, but there's really no w distinction, you know? Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I feel like, I feel like what we need to do is change the Patreon from boss rush network to, <clears throat> Oh, wow. Either boss rush games or boss rush, media and like kind of have a page on the patreon and a web and the website to like 
explain what the different segments of boss rush are you know yes. because you know we have the boss rush partners program which is like i mean it hypothetically exists but we never really did anything with it except for like say hey Laron, uh crossroads is a partner show so so we can have this brand <laughs> brand available you know or mm -hmm. you know we kind of pseudo take on tower casuals my destiny podcast as a partner show but it's because i'm on it you know it's not because not because it's part of boss rush it's just like i'm on it so mm -hmm. i'm not gonna like not lump it in with everything but it's also its own separate thing you know so I, that was another thing that i had to think about too is like how do we like fix the branding so people know which shows are under which you know thing and i well, i, I kind of feel like boss rush network is like our community driven creator focused thing well boss rush network is kind of the name of everything it's, in it, but it's not See, when, and, but I, but when I but start but I'm just saying from because we went from Boss Rush Games to Boss Rush Network and Network is I'm just saying that it's the basic basis of everything. It's just like at not for at the top because Boss Rush Media will be will actually cover everything. Yeah, in the sense and Network now covers like our writing our mm -hmm. our our podcast and stuff and you know we cover how we cover games. Uh, uh, movies, comics, and different topics and stuff like that. That's all under the network banner because that's the entertainment stuff. Yeah. With it. <laughs> I I just it, I feel like we got to figure out how to have them like have Boss Rush Media and Boss Rush Network sit side by side without one feeling like it's overpowering the other. Mm -hmm. Because I I do worry a little bit that like. If we all of a sudden say, you know, part of Boss Rush Media, right? Like, I feel like... They go if you think that that's part of the well, Boss Rush name. Well, yeah, but I also... I don't want the the Boss Rush network, like the writing team and some of the other things feel like we're changing because we're trying to force a different name upon everybody. Mm -hmm. And I don't really know how to do that, so that's why I haven't really changed anything. But I feel like it's something that we need to do as a team anyway. Is like we have to differentiate the in-house content group, which was which is yes. you, me, Laron, Stephanie, Celeste, and Cordy, and and we'll we'll throw Lasby in there because he's he's the leader of of the, the right website, team. right? Like you know, <laughs> and. I mean, he obviously he's welcome to come back on any podcast when he has time, right? I mean, that's that's all right. That's that's an irrelevant point, I guess. But like, we got to We got to find a way to really deliver a message, and maybe that's something we talk about before we kind of revamp the Patreon as well, too. Mm -hmm. I just I just want to know which I want that people, one's the whole team meeting for. for I want for people us. to know which team they're supporting when they go to the Patreon, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe we have two patreons maybe we have one and then the writing team and david and stephanie figure out how something they can do to maybe there's a better way to monetize their stuff aside from patreon because i don't really know how you how you do that like a website through patreon you know what i mean like yeah there's got to be a way to, to differentiate the in-house versus the network and the community stuff and there's got to be a way to let people know which group they're supporting because they have different ways of monetizing <laughs> and different well, ways I... of the content coming out and who's a part of it, you know? I mean, there's some of... there's some crossover, obviously, right? But, like... Yeah. But the thing about it is just, like, do we go back to saying Boss Rush Games I, I for the intro? I, I, th I thought about it. I thought about it. Um, and then just probably have like Lord together or EXP probably still said the thing of um, 
part of the Bosphorus network or yeah um or or even um uh su- I'm not supported but uh I will I want to kind of say sponsor in a sense but like how are we sponsoring them? I mean I we mean could, we, we could say we, like we presented by you know because we we're not like funding them they all have their own ways of funding themselves Yes. We're kind of just giving them a platform to reach more so, people. So I think that's probably a good way. Um, like, hello, everybody. This is Lord Together presented by um, the Boss Rush Network. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, they don't even have to do all that either. I mean, I, I like when they do that. I encourage uh-huh. them to do that. But, I mean, they don't have to if they don't want to, you know. I mean, how they market themselves is their, their business and their yeah whatever, you know, everybody should go support lore together though because they're awesome uh, yeah but and i i just i just want to encourage the wording. yeah i just i just need to figure out and and this is something that we need to have a meeting about and i just haven't had time to sit down and have a meeting with everybody but i don't want to do it without talking to everybody first you know and celeste right. and i kind of had a mini meeting about this already because she was going to help me kind of find a distinction uh but like, you know, I don't know. Do we have a do we have Boss Rush Games again? Do we just do we just say there's two brands, Boss Rush Media and Boss Rush Network. They're bro, they're sister, you know, products, and this is the distinction, you know. And maybe that's it. Maybe that's what we have to do. But. To me personally, like, oh, to me personally, I think Boss Games is mostly Nintendo Power Block at this time, and and in a sense, Crossroads and Crossroads too, uh, and Boss Podcast, because we all three kind of focus on games, and I think everything else outside that, like Talk the Walk, uh, One v One, uh, um, uh, After Dark and stuff, I think that still could be Boss Network. Because those are focusing on different things. Yeah, but those are still uh, in-house things, though. They are. They are in. They are in-house. But I think that is the separation of it. Is that that content, you know, is different than just focus on like like Nintendo Power Block. We only focus on Nintendo. We add some Microsoft in and other stuff like that. But our, but ninety nine percent of that show is focused on Nintendo. It's focused only on games. You know, mm-hmm. the only time we really talk about movies is if Nintendo is introducing a movie to it. We, mm-hmm. we don't talk anything outside of that. Same with Crossroads. They hit on different platforms and stuff, but they're still focusing on one thing, which is games. Yeah. So, and then Buster's Podcast, you guys probably do talk about games, or even if you have side tangents or a different topic or something like that, your main purpose, not I'm going to say main purpose, um, the main thing that, st- that still happens with that is about games. Because once you start asking, what are you guys playing? Or what are you still, what are you watching? Or stuff, that's still part of the game section yeah anything outside of that yes talk the walk is a we're, we're talking about a walking simulator it's a one sh- it's, it's a show that features that but we talk about different style of walking simulators that add casual games to it and, and everything uh and that stuff right there could be under network because it's not part of not saying it's not part of the game section but there's so many different focuses that make that show and everything mm-hmm. and it's not a, and it's not a consistent thing it's like like talk the walk is is kind of um a one month show uh you know, one v one. It's kind of two episodes, or whenever we could get to it and everything. So it's very random. Yeah, after dark is a continuation, you know, a continuous show, but it doesn't really focus on games unless you guys talk about sexy games. You guys talk about different things outside of games. Yeah, so I think that focus is part of the network thing, and all of but all of us together. And he's frozen. What happened? 
the hello yes everybody i'm working on getting a computer so we don't yeah. have these i mean that's issues, that's so. an, that's another thing we should probably hit on tonight too at some point uh but like to your point my my thing is like i want the I want Boss Rush Network to I want people to know that the Boss Rush Network is the is a community driven mm -hmm. content creation hub for people that want to be creative, whether they're writing, whether they want to do a podcast, whether they want yes. to make a video like and obviously that's all up to to David and, and Stephanie and how they want to run the website and stuff. Right. But like, yes, I want that to be like this is this is our community doing cool things and yes. then like i know you want you said you you see uh after dark and one v ones and stuff being part of boss Rush network but these are in-house shows and they aren't part of our network of community creators right they are our in-house so how do we just I, think, I think that and maybe that's that... where like Maybe we don't do Boss Rush games anymore. Like, bring that back. Maybe we just say Boss Rush Media or something. But that's but that's why I that's why I say Boss Rush Network because of that being the base, that being like incorporate incorporating, uh, incorporating. Incorporating, <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say with E, incorporating everything of, that we do. So it's just not the community, but it's the network ourselves. It's the main platform and everything, and, and everything. And the reason why I, I, I brought games, I think, uh, the game stuff is just like shows that is continuous week after week unless there's a break, where everything yeah. else is like it's kind of sporadic. Because it's broken down into different things, so that's just under network, uh, still a basic thing under network, because it's not a consistent. Like we we don't do fifteen talk the walks and have four talk the walk episodes every week. We're not. That'd be doing great that. if we did. People love that Ooh, show. Yeah, that's a that's a lot of games. I know. It's the no. I know we can we can never do that. But like, oh my gosh, dude, people like people love that show <laughs> people like it's literally our highest viewed show on youtube it's our highest listened to episode every time it goes out on the, on the boss rush feed like mm -hmm. i it's i think i think people just love that show because of what you and celeste do with it right i mean i think any let's be honest anything celeste touches is like gold, gold. in terms of views and listens <laughs> so, uh, yeah you know i mean i'm not like saying anything bad about that you know i just like oh man she's just like she's i wish she was on everything because we'd get so many more <laughs> listens or views uh but yeah i mean that's the last thing i just want to say is like at a meeting we're gonna have that conversation of like we gotta figure out how to deliver that message of like here's our mm -hmm. in-house stuff and here's our network of creators and yes boss rush media is the banner right of the company but boss rush network is this boss rush games boss rush blah 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 is this right so uh but the last thing too is like we really want our quality of our audio and our our <laughs> videos to be better so like my ideally i would like to use uh riverside fm or zencaster and record audio and video locally and then just merge it all together but that's never going to happen right especially if we're doing live shows um but i mean maybe we use zencaster to capture the audio so it's better and then just leave the video audio in the video um mm -hmm. but i would like to have better quality things like that um I also think at some point we're going to start streaming to YouTube instead of Twitch or both, uh, you know, just to change some things up, try to reach a newer audience, try to reach a bigger audience. Uh, and then, like I said, I think we're going to try to 
either have a separate YouTube channel for ga- like let's plays and games, or maybe just just have Pow Block and Expansion Pass live on a separate channel. Because I think people going to Pow Block are looking for something different than the Boss Rush podcast and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. As much as I love having it all together, I think it's just like it's really diff- difficult to like. I I don't know. I I feel like it's if you have a channel just full of podcasts and like you know why don't you just listen to the podcast, which is generally what people do, right? Every time I look at our channel and we have one new subscriber i'm like i'm shocked <laughs> because you know and this uh, and definitely it's, it's more like with boss rush network on youtube and stuff it's just like to get that one thing that you're looking for you got to go to a playlist mm-hmm. and instead of just going to different videos to find out what it is because different videos drop every day well not every day on, on set days and stuff. So it's kind of hard to navigate that one thing that you want to see and everything. So yeah. uh, I, I, I could see that what you mean and everything. Like I say, everybody, we're going to have meetings about that. Uh, we're going to discuss it and, you know, really get an idea of where we want to go with Power Block and outside of Power Block, where we want to go with Boss Rush in general. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I just, I just got. Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just got one new story, Corey. Um, Yay, news. That we can touch on. Uh, so, uh, do you want to introduce me for family news? No. Come on. No, you do it. This is, this that's, is, a, that's your this thing. is a change. This is a change. This is something that you should try. No. I think I've done it a few it. times when you haven't been here. And guess what? It's not do as it. cool. Come on, do it. Have fun with it. That's the one thing about it. You, you, you. I am as fun. my co-host. My Lisa. middle name is Fun. <laughs> well, Corey, Fun, Derek, please have fun with this and introduce me for family news. You don't have to do it the same way that I do it's it. It's time give it some for energy. family news. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> So everybody, I just got one story. Um, Japanese charts made at a three debuts is second as PlayStation Five outsells Switch. Mm, I saw that. Um, uh, it's been a busy week in the latest Japanese charts for Famitsu, and while the top spot remains unchallenged, with Splatoon Three still clean on firmly, nearly every other game in this week's software chart is a new release. The big new game for Switch owners in the week of the 24th through October 30th was Bayonetta 3. Platinum Games' long-awaited sequel debuts at number 2 in the charts, just over 10,000 copies behind Splatoon 3 at 41,285 copies. For comparison, Bayonetta 2 reportedly sold around 39,000 copies on Wii U in its first week. Persona 5 Royal on Switch is the only other holdover from last week's charts, dropping to ninth. while the PlayStation has had a decent week with both Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, and Star Ocean, The Divine Force, cracking into the top 10 on both PS4 and PS5. Ace Angler Fishing Spirits found out the top 5 with a decent 23,296 units shifted, while Needy Streamer Overload and Aquarium are the other new Switch releases. And everybody, this is just Japan. Uh, it goes number one, Splatoon 3. Number two, Bayonetta. Number three, Star Ocean, the Divine Force for PlayStation 4. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was number four for PlayStation 4. Um, Ace Angler, Fishing Spirits. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 for PlayStation 5 and 6. Uh, and Star Ocean, the Divine Force is um, PS5, number seven. Aquarium number eight, Persona Five Royal number nine, and Needy Streamer Overload number ten. Now it's kind of funny because Star Ocean did also come out on Xbox, and it's not on this list. Oh, did it come so out on Xbox? It. Yeah, it's on it's on Xbox. It's so Series X. I played the demo. I haven't picked it up for Xbox because I'm waiting. There's just too much that I got right now. Definitely, I I gotta get God of War here, uh, Harvest Stella, and some other games. But yeah, I it's going to be interesting to see how Star Ocean does 
here in America uh, when we see the next MPD. But that's soon three still doing numbers. Um, surprised that Bayonetta two, I mean Bayonetta three came in that number. It seems really low though. But I think we we discussed about that, Corey. That mm -hmm. Bayonetta is still feel like it's a niche game, but I mean yeah, it, Nintendo I, believes it. It it is. I mean this it's at this point. I think you can like Nintendo. Nintendo makes Mario Kart and Animal Crossing so they can fund games like Bayonetta, right? Like it's mm -hmm. never going to be a you know a ten million seller or anything. But like it's at this point, it's like a it's like they what they call prestige games right like it's something that you want on your platform to point at and say look we offer this type of experience here but you know it's not gonna it's not it's never gonna be the next mario game or anything right it's mm -hmm. uh i'm glad nintendo has games like this i think they need more of games like this um yes and maybe they're exploring that with a sequel to astral chain or you know something like that but i think I I I'm actually kind of surprised that Bayonetta was higher than I I I thought I thought it would be lower, but you know I I don't know I I, I think I'm... a lot of people are kind of <clears throat> annoyed with Platinum too, also. But then again, you just say, oh well you can be annoyed with any company and then they put out a good game and then you'd be like, Oh, well, I like the game. So I'm going to buy it. Right. I mean, <laughs> let's look at Activision blizzard. How many people said they weren't going to buy their games. And then you have Diablo two resurrected selling 10 million units and you have 25 million people playing overwatch too. So obviously not that many people cared about what was going on. And it's interesting to see that call of duty even showed up on the Japanese, um, on on Famitsu's uh list. Oh, the um, Japanese. Uh, I thought you, I thought you were about to say like showed up on the charts. I'm like, dude, Call of Duty is the biggest game <laughs> every year. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, because like because Japan is not into no, first person shooters. I know that's why I, I I'm glad you specified the Japanese charts <laughs> because I was this was about to be one of those times where we threw down Ed. Well, I, that's why I said I can't wait to see the next MPD because. And there he goes again. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. You did it I again. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how the next Call of Duty is going to do here in America. Um, well, I think I think people like it. At least everything that I've heard, people really like it. But people also really like the last Modern Warfare. I think Modern War Warfare is like the the one. You know, people love modern warfare. Mm -hmm. So it just it just feel like a quiet release. Like Oh really? I, I feel like this is I feel like this has been one of the more advertised called but I also watch a lot of sports and a lot mm -hmm. of like regular T V. So like I see a lot more ads for things like this. You know? So call dude Call of Duty is literally every other commercial break in an NFL game. And I, I believe that. I definitely believe that. I think quiet release as in it came out. And I guess it's just it might be me with the people that I follow on my social medias just not digging into it or talking about it. And so I know um uh, shout out to the Spawn Camp crew. Um uh Brody's been playing it. Uh he was talking about it on Diggity Podcast that you guys should also check out. And I kind of just asked him a question, just like you know, uh, just about the campaign stuff. Um, and he's playing it on PC and everything. And it's just like the campaign is good, it's around eight hours. Um, but like the I guess the multiplayer right now is having some issues and stuff. And that's kind of all I've really heard about Modern Warfare 2. I'm like, I haven't really hurt anything and i think even you know people who finish who got bayonetta 3 they kind of are now finishing it finishing up and stuff so um that kind of discussion kind of haven't have also fallen away i think people are waiting for sonic and waiting for god of war and pokemon yeah i, th I mean i think yeah i think you hit it right on the head god of war pokemon 
I would argue a lot of people are waiting for that Final Fantasy remaster too. Yeah. So, um, but everybody, that's going to be it for Family News. And actually, you know what, Corey? That's going to be it for the show. We are on, on vacation. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like we we talked about the state of uh power block we kind of also talked about the state of boss rush in a sense um yeah and i guys, I, I, I i you know ed and i talk a lot off air <laughs> like daily mostly mm-hmm. and like sometimes i get really down about things that we're doing like not in terms of what we're doing but like it just gets so stressful and you know i just it's not that i don't enjoy what we're doing i, ju- I just want it to be I want it to be the best it can possibly be. Mm-hmm. Same. And I want it to be, you know, I, I want it to put us in the best position possible to be successful. And I don't think I've done a very good job of doing that in a lot of ways. I think in a lot of ways I have, but in a lot of ways I haven't as, you know, I guess the leader of the team. And I get i i'm really hard on myself i think when it comes to this stuff and i just i want everybody to feel like there's a there's a reason why we're doing this stuff you know and there's a Mm -hmm. reason why we can we've we've continued to do this after all these years and you know i don't care if we have one or one million patron patrons i mean i mean yeah Theoretically, I guess I I do, but you know, I, I, I want to make sure that people like what we do, continue to like what we do and to come to a place where they, they get what they expect, right? Like the boss rush podcast, you expect a conversation of things, you know, like random different things after dark, you go there for non-gaming things, uh, interviews and talk the walk are very specific type of shows right and i feel like the one show that i love the most is the one that we need to refresh the most which is this one and get back on a page where we're we're both happy with it and do more with the content surrounding it you know Mm -hmm. so Anyways, I don't want to fall back down that rabbit hole again because I already did. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, we are on vacation. Uh, you know, Corey, they know where they can find you. You guys know where you can find me. Uh, and we're just going to leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, follow us at Power Block Podcast on Twitter. Join us on, on the Discord. Check us out on BossRush.net and on Boss Rush Network on YouTube or and on Twitch and everything. Uh, I just want to wish everybody a great week, a great weekend. Um, hopefully you are playing some great games. Me and Corey are enjoying our time. Oh, even though this is, uh we're just so excited for the future of boss rush just in general uh we still want to thank you guys for tuning in watching us uh giving us your support um just showing us love and then encouraging in our um thank you very much then everybody we will see you next time on nintendo power block vacation yay Woo-hoo. i'll be tweeting Bye, great picks of food Woohoo! Woohoo!